Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bega Mataji, God of Prabhu. Thank you so very much. So, Hare Krishna. Uh, so, we are very fortunate that uh, we have uh, His Holiness Bhakti Arja Priti Vardhan Maharaj with us. And uh, all of us know Maharaj. Maharaj needs no introduction. At least in our Sangha, everybody knows Maharaj. So, uh, so we are going to start today from Ubdesha Amrit. Uh, it is a it is it was a desire in my heart for many months to start NOI. And uh, I know Maharaj also like Ubdesha Amrit. Uh, many times I ask Maharaj, and Maharaj always tells me, you read Ubdesha Amrit and you understand how to apply things practically. So we are very fortunate that before Karthik, we are getting Maharaj Association and um, uh, we'll be hearing uh, nectar of uh, instructions from Maharaj and all of us we heartily welcome uh, Maharaj by loudly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare His name is Bhakti Arjun Priti Vardhan Maharaj Ki Jai Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna Prabhu Can you hear? Yeah. It is very faint Maharaj very uh, the uh, volume is very less, Maharaj. I wonder why. Okay. I'm not 
Sure. I'll just speak loudly. Can you hear now? Yes, Maharaj. We can hear now. Yes. Okay, I'll just so loud. Proud because it's going Durga Puja. Oh, so oh. Uh, singing. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Bengal. No, man, let's go. Oh. I'll close the window. Okay, Maharaj. Why my picture is coming large? Yes. <laughs> is it better now? Yes, Maharaj. It is better now. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Now, before we start, I want to ask you about, uh, okay, uh, how, how deep we get into it or how many sessions or what is like the, the expectation? How, how do we do it? Because we have like a half an hour now, once a week, no? That yes, Maharaj. Week. Yes, Maharaj. So, what do we, how should we do it? Uh, Maharaj, I think if we can cover uh, one shloka in two classes, that should be fine. Okay. Is that okay? You, you tell yeah, okay. For me, it's fine. If we do it like that, you no know, schedule, we can go for a long time. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. And especially the first four, four verses, which you always insist. So it is better to go even a little slower, Maharaj, because okay. the later ones, you know, we can still, uh, you know, do a little faster. But these are very practical for us, the first four verses. Yes, Maharaj. they are. No, they're actually the, the key verses. I'm just asking because you said, no, it's before Kartik, and Kartik is two weeks. Yes, uh, Yes, yes, Maharaj. We, we, <laughs> yes, so we, we, we will get longer association also. <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, then uh, we will just go. And should we do it? That would be nice also because it's practical, or should be practical, then asking some questions. So I don't know. Should we like be 10 minutes or five minutes for questions? Yes, or right. Whenever there is a question, maybe we can just address the question at the time because it may be most relevant. Okay, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, we'll be keeping it half an hour or 45 minutes, Maharaj, classes. Well, okay, we can go maybe half an hour the class and then we will do some questions. Yes, Maharaj. We can do that. So, we will keep after every class, we will keep 10 minutes for question answers, Maharaj. Five okay. minutes. Let's see. And right. if and we will ask Maharaj if anybody has a question in the middle, then they can write in the chat and we will see Maharaj at any pause or anything, or if the you know in the uh, then we can take up like that also, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. But we'll take it at the end only. All right. Okay. So uh, uh, devotees, I request everybody because uh, anybody who has question in the middle, you can write on the chat and then we will start taking those questions uh, once the, uh, because we have very less time, half an hour every day. So uh, half an hour uh, we'll keep and then we'll keep 10, hour, 10 minutes for question answer. So whatever questions you have, you post it on the chat and we'll take it. Yes, Maharaj. All right. So maybe today we will talk more kind of like about what actually the Upadeshamrita is just like introduction. And we may read the preface, Vashra Prabhupada. So then we know like, like an outline. So then we know then what to expect, what we are looking for. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj, because some people may not, some devotees may not even know about Ubdesha Amrit Maharaj. Right. Well, I would say that you know, quite a few devotees from what I, I understand and they also, they don't know much about, they don't consider it as very important book mm -hmm. uh, because it's a small book. It's, it's uh, you know, among the other books of Shah Prabhupada. Then because it's a small book, then uh, you no, know, it's not considered necessarily as a very important. And on the other hand, I have heard some devotees saying that Upadeshamrita is only for sannyasis. No, not for others. <laughs> so it's like not two extremes. 
but actually Upareshamrita, it's for every devotee to read and every devotee to follow. And it's, yeah, it's uh, Upareshamrita, right? It's, it's Amrita of Upadesha. Because uh, in just a few verses, then the whole process of devotional service is summarized by Rupa Goswami and explained. Now, if you study these verses, then you actually see you know, how practically it is applied, how we can apply it in your life. And you can get into the most intimate pastimes also with uh, Radha Krishna. So everything is described, everything is uh, properly, no, properly explained. Now, it's very important book for us then to study. So, the, the book itself then is structured. It starts from the very beginning of the devotional service, of the devotional life, and goes to the you know, most intimate pastimes. So it, you can say it's a process of from Shraddha to Prema. Then with the little Shraddha, then the devotee, or you can say the aspiring devotee, then he is starting to inquire, what should I do? I feel maybe I'm not happy, or I would like to know more something about spiritual life. I would like to know more about why am I here? Or uh, not there may be many reasons. Bhagavad Gita gives us, right? People who approach Lord, who approach God. So now with these, then uh, the first thing which we should do is to approach Upareshamrita. Because Upareshamrita deals and as you mentioned and yeah the four first four verses actually they are the the key verses that are the most important for us as you know to begin devotional activities with because the first verse then talks about what we need to do for ourselves it's about ourselves it's for ourselves it's just basically the beginning to start with. And the beginning, it's about controlling our senses. So Vacho Vegam, Manasa Vegam, Krodha Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udaropashta Vegam. So the senses must be controlled. These, these are important. It's like a, like for example, no, you may find somebody, no, he gets wounded, and he is profusely bleeding. So before you start giving some medicines and anything like that, first you have to stop the bleeding. And then you can take care of the, no, minute other things. So us, we are, you can say, actually the now bleeding, now the lust in the body is just fully engaged now through the anarthas and we just don't know what to do and we are trying to enjoy ourselves. We are trying to you know, do so many things. Anarthas are dictating now as to what we should enjoy. We get attached. Now we try something and next time it's not good enough. We want more and more and more and just feeling unhappy because the senses cannot satisfy you know, our mind. So first we need to stop that. It's like uh, in the modern modern science, 
the, the people or the scientists, they also describe that as there is a, there is a uh, chemical, like it, it's a hormone, dopamine, which the brain produces. When at the, the production, production of dopamine, then the feeling is of satisfaction. So somebody who is engaged in a more of goodness, then we can see that he may be just uh, being in the nature. He may just uh, you know, observe. He may just be listening to you know, flowing some water creek or uh, hearing the birds. And he may be happy, satisfied. Very little. You know, it's, it's enough for his satisfaction. And that's mode of goodness. Mode of passion, then you know, such a person needs some passion activities. Can be you know, like a, some fast speed or you no know, doing some uh, no, they call it the adrenaline activities. No, you have to <clears throat> the bungee jumping. No, oh, I almost died today, but I didn't. Like in in Switzerland, there is one uh, one like a little mountain. There is a, like a wall, stone wall, which is, I think, maybe like over 100 meters high, but it's just straight. So there is a village nearby, but from that wall, no, there are some uh, those uh, adrenaline seeking people, and they jump off you know, with some parachute, or they jump off. And they have this kind of like a suit, you know, flying suit, which they just glide on. So, yeah, they go and you know, for them it's like pretty like adrenaline, right? Now, it's okay, it's it's fine for them. Second. The villagers are complaining of that, like at least once a week, there is somebody who just somehow fails and he smashes on the ground. And it's right next to the village. So then people are seeing dead people quite often and they don't like it. But that's passion, right? To that such a person who will probably you no, know, not necessarily happy or satisfied, just seeing you no know, sitting next to a, some water creek and you no know, hearing the water. It's more you no know, rajasic activities for the satisfaction. And in Tamaguna, people in ignorance, then they must get really some you know, some heavy. Uh, Activities in Tamaguna, which are, you can say, very gross or very uh, intense for their satisfaction. Like there is a one story actually, Shri Prabhupada was narrating. He was, uh, he was saying how his Guru Maharaj once was in Bali, no, Bali, Burma. There was a, they were like, for a preaching. They had some like, like like a mat, and the devotees were there you now for preaching. So the the devotees you no know, when they you no know, cook prashad, so what do they do? You no, know, they have they make sabji and they fry some puris. So that's that's what they offer to Krishna. But the neighbors you know, in that area, they were complaining about some like obnoxious smell. Something stinks when the devotees cook. They couldn't understand what is it, what, what stinks? And it was actually the, the fried ghee. Now frying in the ghee, the frying the, the luchi, the puris, 
would really stink for the people around. So they could not really understand why, what, what, is, the, what is the reason. And then after some time, they discovered that uh, the people, they have uh, also a tradition and they would have like a, like a sauce which they put on their meal when, uh, no, when they have some festival, it's a special one. You know, like somebody may use some soya sauce or some ketchup. So they have one sauce and they call it nafi. Now, when, and the, the devotees came to know about, they came to also know about how is the sauce made? So the sauce is prepared that on every street there, they used to have some uh, like iron drums, just a drum. And if there would be some like a dead animal, then they would just throw it into the drum. So it was like that. And when needed, so at the bottom of the drum, there was a tap. You open the tap, you collect the liquid, and the liquid was the nafi, it was their sauce. So now you can imagine how much stink must be there, the, the liquefied dead animals, and they put that on their meal, and they are satisfied and happy with that. But for them, fried ghee makes them you know, feel like an obnoxious smell. So why is that? It's because of gunas. So people in Sattva Guna, they will appreciate the meal or scene or anything in Sattva. Tatva Guna will be attractive. But people in Raja Guna, they will have to do something more rajasic. People in Tamaguna, they will go for more tamasic things. Like you see, Shia Prabhupada gives the example. If you try to feed a pig rasa gulas, it will not want. The pig wants stool, because this is natural food. So, because of our anarthas, because of our nature, then we are attracted to certain things. The anarthas, they agitate the senses. And you know, through the senses, then we are trying to satisfy the mind. Now, as long as we are unrestrictedly trying to agitate the senses, then we are going to be suffering the consequences. But as soon as we attempt, we don't have to fully control them. Like Krishna Arjuna also says, controlling the mind, it's better to you know, it's easier to control the wind than the mind. So yeah, it's not easy. So therefore, I say attempt, as long as we, or as soon as we start attempting to control the mind, then immediately there will be progress. First, we will see that, like that, sometimes devotees, they come into a devotional service and they feel like, okay, now I'm very ecstatic. I can do, I can chant uh, more Hare Krishna. I can do you know, more things. But they start feeling actually even more, you can say guilty or you no, know, their conscience uh, starts, starts uh, getting on them. They may actually feel even more depressed. 
it's not because of the devotional service, but it's because by these activities of purifying, the activities of devotional activity, the devotional activities, they start purifying the heart. And one becomes more introspective, seeing his own anarthas. And naturally, then seeing kind of like how, how uh, conditioned one is, one becomes sometimes more depressed, more disgusted with himself. There can be different reactions, no? But the point is that once we start seeing that there is something not right, that we are not in control, we think that we are happy, but actually we are you know, happy because of what? Who says so? We think we are, but it's momentarily, and then moment of happiness, and what comes is sukha changes into dukkha. So it's constant. And the moments of sukha, the moments of happiness are much, much shorter than the moments of distress in our lives. But we choose to remember the, the moments of happiness and we choose to forget the moments of distress. That's our selective, selective uh, memories. Because otherwise, how can you survive? Right? The, the whole life is so bad. And now, especially on the Facebook, we can always post only the good about you. But no, you don't want anybody to know the bad part of you. So therefore, Facebook is, seems like ideal. You, you can just let people know what you want. You want people to know you from one side. But you don't want anybody to get too close to you to come to know you from uh, the darker sides. So that's again, selective. I want, I don't want. It's also some gratification. So when we start understanding this, it, it's what's happening with us, then we can start inquiring. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want uh, to be conditioned. I want to do something about it. What can I do about it? That's the time to open Upareshamrita. And Upareshamrita then tells us, then first of all, then stop the bleeding. Stop and trying to enjoy the senses. It's useless. It can never, the senses can never be satisfied. Stop that. So what should I stop? What should I do? Then, Vacha Vegam, Manasakrata Vegam, Jihva Vegam, Udrapashta Vegam. Stop these. So, Vacha Vegam. Then, uh, not that you stop talking. Speech is the communication, is natural you know, for human beings. You have to talk. But then, what do you talk? Control your speech. Manasa, control your mind. Krodha, anger, control your anger. There's no need to get angry. No. What for? Sometimes you may, but those situations are very rare. Then jiva, control what you eat, control your tongue. Sometimes you may get some, some nice things to eat, but know that you should always eat Krishna Prashad. So if you desire something, no, something nice to eat, then okay, make something nice, offer it to Krishna, do it for Krishna, take the remnants. And it's a controlling. No. Udaropashta. Then the belly and genitals. So these things can be controlled. So this verse no, says that we should 
We cannot stop sin gratification, but we can control it. If you know how much was the limit and you cannot cross the limit, then it's easy or easier. So that's what the first verse will talk about. On the second verse, then we will also hear, then once we passed it, once we decided, okay, I want to attempt, I want to start attempting to control my senses. Okay, good. Now, then we will hear about what we should do to make sure it not it, to prevent it from recurring, to prevent that we will not want again to fall into this gross sense gratification. Then the third verse, we will hear about what we can do. Now, it's more, more or less in control, but again, just by restricting ourselves, it will not help us. It will not last for a long time. Why? We will talk about it later. The third verse we'll talk about then how we what how we need to engage ourselves with relationships so that we can progress with whom to associate and how to associate. And the fourth verse then will be specifically about the relationships. So if we can get that far, if we can get that far to understand what we need to do and we actually you know, do it, then one can achieve you know, the platform of Nishta. Because Nishta means you know, Nishtha Bhakti, means steady. So once one understands about the relationships among devotees and appreciates it, and this is his life and soul, it's a Nishta platform. So if you can get through that study and to apply it and to realize it, then we can get through the most difficult part of devotional activity, devotional service, devotional life. So, yeah, okay, now it's uh, seven o'clock. So, all right, that will be just a, like a short introduction. And any questions on that? Maharaj, if you can guide us, uh, that should we read before coming to these sessions? That should we read? Good. That will be helpful. Yes. If you could for the next week, then if you can read the preface and the first verse. Okay. With, with the first purport. That will be good. And uh, yeah, in the preface, then we will talk about. Actually, what was the purpose? Because Srila Prabhupada talks about what was the purpose of Rupa Goswami not writing it. So maybe you can also go through it and try to find out. Try to find out the reason. Now, why did Rupa Goswami write the Upadeshamrita? It will be very good if you find it in the preface. And in the, the purpose to the first verse, then if we can look into how can these, uh, these uh, uh, controlling the senses, how can that apply to you? And try to think about what you are doing for it and uh, in your life. How are you trying to, you know, to control the speech or the mind or the anger? Think about it, some small things, you know, if you want, you can also talk about you know, how you try and you were successful or you tried, you were not successful. It will be good you know, if some practical applications that you are thinking about, yeah. you're applying yourself and is it helping, is it not helping? And that will be, that will be very, very helpful, very good. 
So if you are reading the, the purport, then I would say, try not to really read it, rather try to study it. Be very conscious, very careful, and try to study it. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, if you can tell us a little bit about the difference between re reading and studying a little bit more, Maharaj. Okay. Reading, you can read a book. I don't know what book, some novel. Maybe, I don't know, you can read the Harry Potter, right? <laughs> some book, you can just read. And you can read the book really quickly and then, you know. But then when you read uh, something quickly, then Okay, you are grasping something here and there, but you are not trying to contemplate. When you are studying, then you are trying to grasp the meaning. So that, that meaning, or trying to grasp the meaning is very important. So that's the studying. So when you are reading a book, Try to contemplate. So you read something, okay. You should control your, your mind, Vajra Vegam or Manasa Vegam. Okay. You should control your speech or your mind. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, what, what is your Prabhupada saying about it? Control, okay. No, I just look, look it up. Oh, that's what it means. Okay, and how okay, so what do my no, how am I doing it? Uh, what can I do? And uh, try to develop. The, the idea of thinking about it, contemplate about it, how you can apply it in your life. So that's studying. That you are looking, like we were talking before about, and uh, the education has three parts, Shravanam, Mannam, Niridhyasanam. So Shravanam is acquiring the knowledge, but you are just, now you can say like, hoarding the knowledge, you know it, you may know it, you may go and do some quiz and be very good at it. But it doesn't mean that you know. No, knowing, really knowing, it's not actually Gyan. Really knowing is Vigyan. Then you know how to apply it. So that application, you can start by getting the knowledge. You get the knowledge, you read the book and then you already think about how does it apply in your areas of life? How does it apply? No, what does it mean? How does it apply to you or to your friends or to your relatives? And how, how can you apply it in the relationship? So you contemplate. Or you can also say that you are actually deliberating. So that's studying. So you are already on a part of mananam. It's the second part of the of the uh, process of education. So Shravanam Mananam. And then once you apply it properly, then you get the realization. It's like somebody is explaining some recipe. So instead of then trying to just, oh, how, how much flour, how much, how much? Half a kg, okay, how, okay, is that trying to understand it? Then rather try to understand the principle behind it. Okay, so you mix the flour, then you put you know, warm water, you no, know, and then you knead it. You no, know, trying to understand, you can visualize it, you can contemplate about it, and you now trying to, you're making it in your mind when it's being described, then you will not forget it. But if the recipe is, no, it, if all you remember is how much uh, of each, and, but you don't know how to put it together, then there is unlikely you will make anything good out of it if you don't know the process. But if you know the process, then even if we don't know exact amount of the ingredients, but no, with the process, you know, the, the dough should be soft. So if you put, no, a little less water, you can always add water and then no, put less water, the dough is going to be hard. You have to put more water and then you will get it uh, no, more soft. 
but that, when you understand the principle. But if you don't, or the recipe says, I should put half kilo of flour and I put uh, no, 200 gallons of water, mix it together and it may, may not work because each flour is a bit different. So like that, when you read a book, then you should try to contemplate about how does it apply to me? What am I, what can I get from it? How can I apply it? Okay? Yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So uh, I think we don't have any question today because it's just a uh, introduction session, Maharaj. Does anybody has any question? So we can ask. Okay, no question today, Maharaj. And uh, and we will uh, will try, uh, Maharaj. That uh, uh, Rani Prabhu, you please send a soft copy on all the groups of NOI, and uh, also write that for the next class it will be better if you can read the preface, and uh, find write the question also the why Rupa Goswami wrote this book. And then, uh, you know, the first verse and the first question for that also what Maharaj asked. Yes, Maharaj, we'll do it. It will be good. Yes, yes, we'll do it, Maharaj. Okay, then. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. All right. Thank you. These are Thank short you. sessions, but uh, uh, we are very grateful that you gave us this time, Maharaj. Thank you so very much. Okay. Yes. So we thank, thank uh, Priti Vedan Maharaj by loudly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So, thank you so very much, everyone. Or, as we have heard the first session, or, if we are saying Maharaj, अगर हम उस हिसाब से सुनेंगे और उस हिसाब से एक हफ्ते के अंदर वो प्रीफेस छोटा सा ही प्रीफेस है और श्लोक भी पढ़ के आएंगे सो देन इट विल बी मच मोर बेनिफिशियल और महाराज विल आल्सो फील कि वो ऐसे नहीं बोलते जा रहे हैं है ना और देयर इज सम रेसिप्रोकेशन देयर इज सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग और ये महाराज का शुरू से ही रहा है कि हमेशा ही इज वेरी एम्फसाइज ऑन एप्लीकेशन एंड रियलाइजेशन नॉट जस्ट इंफॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग सो वी विल ट्राई टू रीड दिस so thank you so very much hari krishna all glories to shri lakshmi prabha hari krishna prabhu ji thank you so much